Aloha, <clears throat> it is I, Pan the Magic Dragon, and I am here today to talk to you about the path of the dragon and the fae as they relate to each other. And the spicy title of this uh, is Men are of dragon and women are of fairy. And it's a take on the men are from Mars, women are from Venus book, which I've never read and don't care about, but it was a thing in the 90s. But men are of dragon and women are of fairy. And so um, let's start with the uh, esoteric lore of my own ancestral lineage, which is the Druid tradition, uh, the mystery schools of the Avalonian, Arthurian, and Grail uh, lineages. Uh, if you have any Western European ancestry, if you're from the British Isles in particular, you may have this shared ancestry, but really it's saturated all of Western culture. So you find this trope, this theme, this uh, energetic frequency in all the movies, um, and you know, everything from Star Wars, Game of Thrones, etc. And so, um, in, in this ancient path, uh, the, there are two, there are priestesses and there are spiritual knights, uh, and the priestesses are the, the leaders of, uh, vision intuition they're the ones who are the seeresses and they they through their receptive yin uh, aspect they embody goddess and they receive divine channeling they receive receive oracular visions um they receive uh spiritual uh wisdom and then transmit that to the knights to give the knights their quest and then indeed receive the support the aid of the knights and the warriors now this is not a this is an equal partnership, but it is a yin and yang partnership. It is a sun and moon. It is a, a, a masculine feminine partnership. And so we see the dragon lineage here uh, very strong in the men. So we have Uther, the pen dragon, who literally took his name from the falling uh, dragon comets. We have, uh, an, uh, you know, Arthur being the coming uh, of this dragon culmination, being the Uther, the father dragon. And then... Uh, uh, Ivrain, uh, or Grain, um, the wife of Uther, the father, uh, the mother of Arthur being, um, of the fairy race, uh, and being clearly, uh, spoken about in the lore. Uh, we have other dragon warriors, uh, such as Merlin himself, who is a masculine being in the Arthuriad, and he wields a staff that can turn into a dragon and blaze his enemies in battle with giant torrents of fire. He also gave prophecies and communed with dragons. Uh, the red dragon and the white dragon being very iconic in that lore. And these are all masculine beings. Now, in the lore, the priestesses are said to be uh, of the fey race. So the women are of Avalon, which is this esoteric mystery school for priestesses and women. Um, that And they're, they're, again, it just the fairy is very clear. It's explicitly stated that here comes the fairy priestess Nimue, Nivian, Vivian, from the Lady of the Lady of the Lake, you know, in the Isle of all the priestesses, and they are the Fae. They're very spoken of as that. So that's men and women. And um, within my own downloads, and also within the lore, and within other traditions, and and within Druidry and such, the Avalonian Grail traditions. Um, you have uh, Druidry teaches that the dragons are the masculine, in particular, like the ley lines of the earth, where we have uh, between, say, the nodes of megalithic sites like Stonehenge and all the others, thousands and thousands of them out there, many of which we don't even know about yet, are getting, getting discovered by people like my former teacher, current teacher, but passed from this life, Ivan Macbeth. Read The Crystal Journey, it's a little bookmark. But Druids will teach you, I'm trained in Druidry, taking initiation in Druidry. Uh, will teach you that dragons are masculine ley le lines and then the feminine are either serpents or fairy. There's another Avalonian teacher that I have that is, teaches that for every dragon, there's a fae. For every fairy, there is a dragon. If, and and so these are otherworldly beings. These are, you know, non-physical beings, um, but they are also embodied with us and we have them as our guides, guardians. We also carry those energies. Now let's talk about, we've spent about half the time talking about the lore and there's so much more examples, but... The main point is that men are from dragon, women are from fairy. And so what's happening now in our world? Well, we have the rise of popularity of both fairies and dragons. And we have seen um, some embrace of the fae. So when you think about this naturally, and this is the controversial part of this video is we're talking about uh, gender roles 
and um, you know it's sort of within this like binary system and so within this I'll say to you whatever you are be everything and be you know uh, man woman non-binary trans whatever you like it's all sacred um, and uh, also we all have masculine and feminine within us this is a popular thing in spiritual teachings I get it we all have dragon energies and we all have fairy energies however primarily and fundamentally we have at our nature men are dragon women are fairy now look at a young girl is is she's wearing fairy wings does that make sense or do you just see a young little dragon when you look at a young girl no you see a, a fairy child when you look at a young lad wielding a sword uh, you see you feel that the dragon energy right it's a it's a young lad now this is the, the, the current controversy. So it's like we are in a time where women are, many people are, are, are re, women are re-embracing their masculine, which is, which is good in some ways um, as a result of how things have played out. Um, and men are learning how to work with their masculine energies in new ways, whether that's um, re-embracing them or uh, exploring, you know, their power or maybe the, the shadows of their power. There's a lot of shadow dragon stuff. And I'll be the first to tell you that, you know, I've, I work with that and obviously there's darkness um on the face side as well but you know we see more popularity now with people cosplaying um obviously though the year of the dragon is big so we have some traditions that have emerged and then just some individual teachers people like kaya Ra, who is the founder of uh the gaia so the uh, sophia dragon codes uh and tribe and honor to Kaya and her deep spiritual path and honor to those who practice in her lineage. I believe that they're very good hearted and they have a lot of deep wisdom. However, there's been this rewriting that now the dragons are women and all feminine and that um, there's uh, like Buffalo white calf woman of the Lakota people is now a woman dragon. Like suddenly just like, you know, it's just Mary Magdalene's just a dragon now. And it's like in the Bible, we have many dragons, but they're almost always masculine. You have the seven headed dragon um, that rises in Revelations. You also have like the seven headed sort of dragon, seven headed beast that, but it's, it's the whore of Babylon, the, the fairy that's riding on this dragon and working with the dragon. You have Daenerys Targaryen. She's not a dragon. She's a mother of dragons. You have mother of dragons archetypes are found. There are some feminine dragons like Tiamat, but... The problem is that I'm seeing with these women is that they're really like fiercely like, yes, let's embrace sacred rage. Like, let's take our power back. Let's find our voices. Let's get over our trauma. And I get that. I support that. And yet what I'm finding, just this is personal experience and you might disagree. And it's, again, no diss on an individual. I love all the people who I'm talking about and honor them as sacred practitioners. But what I'm finding is that the women that are really into being in their own dragon energy um, are not receptive to the ancient relationship between yang and yin, between paladin, spiritual knight, and priestess, between dragon and fairy, because women are taking on the dragon energies themselves. And I find that for me, like I am a de devotee as, as a dragon, a guardian, a, a warrior servant of the fae race. And that's what my t dragon teacher, Elder Sion, teaches that we are lovers and that our role is to be the the hero heroic warriors and we have spiritual power and we have magic and we have wisdom but like really we're obeying to the women and so when the that's what i put my heart on the line and and so um you know for many women that i know that are deeply in their fairy they have dragon allies who aid them and so what i'm finding is this inaccessibility and a guardedness, uh, a sort of like uh, uh, wounded uh, violence that is being uh, sort of cultivated. I mean, I look at Kaya Ra, she's deeply, deeply um, uh, working with wild, dark energies around sexual abuse and really nuts of stuff. And, and it's sort of this like, um, so when we re-embrace these ancient roles, then we can be complementary. And I won't get into all the stuff. There's different good and bad about polarity teachings and all this. But if this is our ancient way, uh, that's what the Druids teach. That's what the Avalonian priestesses and my teacher, Lady Graylin, all these people teach, then let us embrace that. We're having a men's quest in August, Lords of Lunasa, alongside the Priestess College, Dragon and Fae. So may your, you know, may, may the dragon men, may you be empowered in that and the dragon and the fae women, may you be served by that. May you all be blessed.